Okay, we're going to do Niagara File, another cookbook recipe. Um, and again, here's the website if you want to look at um, any of uh, the latest, greatest NiFi stuff I put up there. And again, if you have any questions or any issues with uh, NiFi that, you know, I'd love to try and help you out, just um, send me this uh, uh, email address uh, on the bottom here. All right, so let's go ahead and go to the next recipe. Okay, this is just an intro for the... Uh, what I'm going to try to get across in some of these uh, videos and call them recipes, I guess, on uh, uh, different ways to come up with solving some solutions. Um, and basically, it's going to be a, a series of videos I, I'm putting together that's going to serve as like uh, a cookbook of recipes on how to get you uh, knife by up and running and, and the experiences that I've come across that helped it uh, make me uh, use knife by more efficiently. Um, it's just a collection of about nine different uh, problems and issues and solutions that I've come up with that I've used to make it uh, easier to use an i5. And if it helps you out, great. If not, uh, well, that's fine too, but maybe you can learn a little more of the intricacies of how an i5 works and some of the cool things you can actually do with it uh, under the hood. Um, some of the things I put together initially, I might add to them later, is uh, a recipe to include uh, best practices for setting up. These are the things that I've come across that I think are Probably minimal things that I would do whenever I uh, configure NiFi to include maybe you know what you know changing the port number, coming up with a banner, um, how to set the memory in NiFi, what file is it that you actually have to modify to increase the memory settings uh, for the JVM, um, how to clean up the directory. Sometimes I'll I'll find out the NiFi will be in a funky state and I want to just kind of clean things up, but I don't want to lose my flow files or, or my flow file configuration or maybe even the, some of the XML files that I have for. Uh, configuring NiFi, for example, the properties file, for example. I want to keep all that stuff. Uh, what directory is what I need to clean up in order to do that? Um, how to make a custom uh, custom title for your NiFi web page. If you run NiFi, you probably notice at the very top, it just says maybe NiFi flow or something like that. And maybe you want to change that to something something more uh, personal that maybe that reflects maybe a project name or something like that, that a little more descriptive. I'll show you how to do that. Uh, I pretty much use ActiveMQ for all my JMS messaging, so I thought it'd be worth it to show you how to install ActiveMQ. Um, I don't want to say minimally, but at least I'll show you how to do it securely, somewhat securely, to uh, let NiFi communicate uh, through JMS through the ActiveMQ server. And there's some neat things you can do with NiFi for JMS. Um, if you want to pass, for example, some attributes uh, from your Ni NiFi topic, or NiFi topic, um, there's things you have to do in order for it to, tr to transfer over to the uh, destination uh, topic side. So if you want your attributes to flow through the uh, ActiveMQ uh, JMS server, basically there's some things you need to do to the attributes to make sure they get seen by the other side. Uh, how you set the, uh, the content type for HTTP communications. So sometimes uh, the type of data that you're going to be receiving or type of data you want to send, maybe it's XML, maybe it's JSON, uh, maybe it's a bitmap, something like that. Uh, I'll show you how to go ahead and, you know, came across an issue where I needed to send an XML file and um, out of the box, uh, NiFi um, only uses one content type and you know, just showed you a little trick on how to get around that. Um, at this time, on this version of NiFi that I'm running, uh, this does not work. I'm hoping that it'll get fixed uh, by the time the formal release comes out, but I'll show you how it should work and how it should look and how you can do it if you want to set the content type for doing these HTTP type uh, MIME settings. Uh, finally, a little fun thing. Uh, if you notice in the upper left, it, uh, there's a logo there. It says NiFi. I'll show you how to go in and set your own custom logo. Um, it will explore um, the libraries, the NiFi libraries, and how you can open them up and how some of the uh, graphics are set. So if you wanted to customize everything as far as how your NiFi looks visually, uh, you can get an idea of how to do that. And finally, probably the most powerful thing that I use is um, we get a lot of XML data, is using NiFi to actually pass, parse some of the uh, XML data in the payload, and then using that information to go ahead and sort things or make determinations of whether to notify things or just, you know, it's a very powerful uh, feature of NiFi to actually use this XML query uh, language for querying your XML data in your payloads. Uh, the format I put together, basically you have a, a problem uh, you want to do something, and then um, I outline a solution. I just I give a practical uh, example with actual settings that I use. You don't have to use what I use. For, uh, for example, I think 
uh, for changing the port. I think I set it to port uh, uh, 9090. You can certainly change it to something else. Uh, for a banner, I set it to Mike's cool NiFi flow. You can certainly set it to something else. Uh, but I'm going to give you hard number examples that show you what actually work on the NiFi instance that I'm running. Then I go ahead and discuss what's happening, uh, why, why is what's happening reflected in the uh, display, why is it working the way it's working, and uh, you know, what you can do to make it work better. And then finally, I'll give actual video demo of how to do what I've discussed in the particular uh, recipe. For this version, I'm using uh, the NiFi. The latest version out right now is still the beta testing. It's 0 0.4.1. And the tool that I happen to use a lot is uh, 7-zip for managing the archive. So there's a flow.xml.gz file that I modified quite a few times. And I found the 7-zip utility works great for actually manipulating the uh, data files within that.